Now that we understand the symbolism within the Magician and High Priestess cards, we know we are first and foremost ethereal beings who merely spend time birthed into our physical containers onto the material realm. We experience our incarnations on this realm between the two manifested planes for a period of 26,000 years, which is one precessional cycle. As with all things that exist in our universe, everything is a microcosm and macrocosm of the other, a fractal within a fractal. And as Hermetics tells us, this manifests on all the planes, physical, spiritual and mental. However, the cycle we experience as physical beings incarnating on the physical plane is a smaller microcosm to the cycle of our ethereal self existing on the ethereal plane. This is why some may look at the time frame of 26,000 years as quite a large period of time, and that is because it is being viewed from a physical perspective. However, if you look at it from an ethereal perspective, 26,000 years is not such a long time. And just as our physical bodies go through the cycle of death and resurrection, so does our ethereal self. However, the rebirth of the soul is based upon what is written in one's heart, for the returning light will illuminate the good within each soul. In the ancient Egyptian weighing of the heart ceremony, the heart was to be as light as a feather. However, in this instance, light does not just equate to weight, but also the light of Osiris, Orion. As we saw in the previous video regarding the Fool card, the feather is symbolic for Orion, God consciousness, and also the changing angles of light. We are birthed from God consciousness in our true state of being, in our ethereal form. And as shown in the Fibonacci sequence and golden mean, we then split into male and female upon creation. Now that we have been manifest from God's mind, we are bestowed with physical attributes representing the container in which our ethereal being will be birthed into. These attributes are symbolized by the cards number three, the Empress, and four, the Emperor. So let us now look into what the symbolism reveals in these two cards about the male and female divine twin souls. Let us first start with looking at where these two cards are placed on the Fibonacci sequence and golden mean spiral. We can see the first twin soul to manifest with the physical attributes is the Empress card, which is card number three and represents the divine female twin soul who is first to manifest with physical attributes due to her female creation energy on the physical plane. However, this is also because the twin souls are mirrors to each other and we will often see this represented in the religious depictions of them also. So the order in which they are manifested into their physical forms is the mirror to the order they were created in the ethereal. Let us now look at how these cards relate to the numbers within the golden mean spiral and Fibonacci sequence. We can see the divine female twin soul equates to the number 2 and the emperor is now connected to the number 3. However, if we look at the golden mean section where the emperor is placed, it encompasses all the other sections and due to it equating to the number three within the Fibonacci sequence, this is representing the trinity held within this whole golden mean section. So not only do we see the three being depicted in the emperor's tarot card connecting her to the divine trinity, we now see it connected to the emperor due to his placement within the sequence. So with the Empress equating to a 2 on the Fibonacci sequence and then correlating that to the number keys from ancient Egypt, the number 2 relates to 20 and the heart. And we also see the white heart clearly represented on the Empress card. This is symbolic of her connection with the divine and her ethereal self through the good intentions of a pure heart. With the Emperor being connected to the number 3 in the Fibonacci sequence, if we look to the number keys we have from ancient Egypt, this number connects him to the navel chakra. The energy aspects within this chakra when related to the number 3 instead of 11 are more connected to the sun. And there is a very strong connection to the sun and this chakra and this is why it is also called the solar plexus. If we look to the Hindu texts, this energy point at the navel is called the Manipura. And according to the Hindu tradition, this chakra is the third primary chakra and is called the city of jewels. The Manipura symbol for this chakra is depicted by a downward pointing red triangle. 
The area inside of the triangle is called the fire region and the yellow circle in which it is situated is showing a connection to the sun energy. And as the triangle is pointing down, this is showing this energy is manifest below onto the earthly plane within the male twin soul. This triangle is also representing the Trinity birthed onto the physical plane, for within every soul is a part of the other as well as the divine. The ten petals are showing the infinite cycle of the souls rebirthed into the physical bodies and reuniting with God consciousness, as ten is an infinite number, for if you divide it by the Trinity, you will get an infinite number, three point. 3333 to infinity. We can see the number 10 is also represented in the Kabbalah Tree of Life diagrams by alchemists Kircher and Robert Flood, who show 10 spikes or rays at the top and bottom of the Tree of Life to indicate that this cycle of birth and rebirth of the soul is infinite. The Hindu texts also relate the fire region within the triangle to the god Vani who is shining red with four arms and is seated on a ram. So we see a connection to the god Vani, the ram and this chakra and the ram's heads on the emperor card. We also see that the god Vani has four arms and let us not forget that even though the emperor is in the number three position in the Fibonacci sequence, he is still also a number four in the tarot. The stone chair he sits upon is also representing a square which also equates to the number four and symbolizes the foundational and earthly instinctive attributes he brings down with him. As mentioned previously, these foundational attributes are also the reason why the male soul is the first to forget his divinity as we move into a time of lower consciousness within the cycle. Once the memory of their true self is lost, they use their foundational attributes to take power and take control over the physical on the material plane. However, this is a result of the waning light of consciousness, so should not be viewed as evil or negative. It is just a part of the cycle of consciousness we exist in. The seed mantra for this chakra is the syllable Ram, and within the bindu or dot above this mantra resides the god Rudra, and he is sometimes described as red or white with three eyes and a beard. Rudra is one of the names used for the god Shiva, so we can see a direct connection to Rudra and Shiva, the divine male twin soul in the ethereal form. So we see that Rudra represents the foundational and physical aspects of Shiva and embodies the unpredictable and destructive earthly elements within the male twin soul. However, Rudra was also a healer. So we see these renewing forces are also present within these foundational characteristics of the divine male twin soul. Rudra is also said to be the early form of Shiva. This is symbolic of the divine male soul evolving from his physical form into his ethereal self represented by Shiva. Now let us look to what the emperor holds in his hand. We see in his left hand he is symbolizing the male and female with the ankh, with both the circle and rod being depicted. His immortality is also symbolized within the ankh, as it was symbolic for the key of eternal life. The orb in his right hand is known as the Globus Crucica and was said to show one who had complete dominion over all. In ancient times, the orbs were held by priests as a symbol of the sun and its power. However, the real truth has been obscured and the orb is actually symbolic for the receptacle of the divine knowledge he holds within him. This orb has had many changes in the way it has been depicted throughout the ages. However, we can see in this very early depiction of the Emperor Frederick I Barbarossa dated 1188 that he holds the symbol of the orb as a circle and cross and below it is a book indicating knowledge being brought down to the physical plane from the higher consciousness in the light of Orion transmuted through the sun. We also see in this painting by Leonardo da Vinci that the orb is clear, representing that the Holy Spirit that brings in higher consciousness is not definable. The five gems on his crown show that his divinity is in his destiny, for the number five relates to the agreement or covenant with the divine made by the soul. For the soul's potential is known to itself 
and God consciousness before it is manifest onto the physical plane. In James 1.12 it states, Blessed is the man that endures trial, for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. We also see this Bible verse is 1.12, which equates to the number 4. Once again, the Emperor Tarot card is a number 4. Now let us look to the Empress card in more detail. Firstly, we see that the earthly plane is not shown as rugged and harsh as it was on the Emperor card. And this is because the Divine Female Soul has a natural connection to the higher energies of Mother Earth, symbolized by the seven tree peaks. For the number 7 is connected to the ethereal and higher states of being. The eight pearls on her necklace are symbolic of her immortality. She has 11 stars on her crown and this is showing the connection to the creation aspect within her on the material plane as 11 is connected to the manifesting of souls onto the physical plane. She also holds her scepter higher, again showing her connection to the ethereal. The scepter is also representing the rod and the male twin soul and the circle at the end of the pillow is symbolic of the ring and the female twin soul. We also see at the top of her scepter there is the same orb that was on the Emperor card, symbolic of the divine knowledge he holds within him. The illumination of divine knowledge within the female twin soul is symbolized by the pomegranates on her gown. These were depicted on the curtain in the previous card, the High Priestess, but now she wears them on her garment. These pomegranates are showing the female twin soul's understanding of the Torah and the divine knowledge which it represents. She also sits upon a white heart, showing again she is close to the divine. And we see the symbol for Venus is shown within the heart. Aphrodite is a goddess connected to Venus and her other symbols are the dove and the pomegranate. The dove is symbolic of Venus bringing in the light of God consciousness and we can see this is represented with the dove in religious paintings showing the Holy Spirit or light that brings with it the illumination of divine knowledge. Aphrodite's symbols also included wheat and we can see wheat is depicted at the bottom of the Empress card. In Christian mythology wheat was symbolic for the children of truth. And in Matthew 13, 24, Jesus said, The good seed, the wheat, are the children of the kingdom, the product of truth which the sower had sowed. On the ancient Egyptian number keys, we see that 13 is at the crown chakra and represents the death of the physical container to reunite with God consciousness. 2 plus 4 is 6 and 6 represents the physical form. This is showing truth is the seed one needs to sow to return to God consciousness from the physical form. And again in this verse, Psalms 55, The wheat are the true church, gathered with the sickle of truth. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Five and five are symbolic of the agreement or covenant with the divine made by the twin souls before they are manifest onto the physical plane. And 5 plus 5 equals 10, which is symbolic of them honouring this covenant and living in truth, being their key to this infinite cycle and their immortality. So now we have unlocked the symbolism within these two cards. Let us move on to the next card, the Hierophant.